Imagine being trapped underwater for months on end, living in a cramped and confined space with no access to the outside world. This is the reality for the brave men and women who serve on submarines in the United States Navy. The U.S. Navy submarine is a marvel of modern engineering. Designed to operate underwater for extended periods of time, these vessels are equipped with the latest technology to keep their crew safe and comfortable. But despite all these advancements, life on a submarine can be challenging. From the cramped quarters and isolation to the high pressure and dangerous missions, these submariners must work together and rely on each other to survive and succeed. Get ready to dive deep and discover the world of submarine life in the U.S. Navy. The day starts early on a submarine, with the crew rising before dawn. The sailors quickly go about their morning routines, which are designed to be as efficient as possible given the limited space. There is no room for privacy on a submarine, so the sailors must learn to live and work in close quarters with one another. Despite this, the crew is a tight-knit group, relying on each other for support and encouragement. Once the sailors have finished their morning routines, they head to their duty stations to start their workday. The crew is divided into various departments, each with its own specific responsibilities. Some sailors work in the engine room, keeping the submarine's powerful engines running smoothly. Others work in the control room, monitoring the ship's systems and communicating with the surface. Still others work in the sonar room, listening for any signs of danger. What does the morning routine deep underwater look like, and where do they get their breakfast? The morning routine on a U.S. Navy submarine deep underwater is a well-coordinated effort designed to maximize efficiency and safety. The sailors must be prepared for a day of work in the cramped and challenging conditions of life underwater. The day starts early, with the sound of the alarm ringing through the ship's tight quarters. The sailors quickly rise from their bunks, gathering their gear and making their way to the mess hall for breakfast. On a submarine, feeding the crew is a top priority. With limited space and resources, the food must be carefully prepared and stored to ensure that the sailors have the sustenance they need to perform their duties. The food preparation begins in the galley, a compact kitchen located on the ship. The galley is staffed by a team of trained chefs who work to create nutritious and tasty meals for the crew. Despite the limited space, the galley is equipped with modern appliances, such as refrigerators, ovens, and stoves, allowing the chefs to prepare a wide variety of foods. The chefs work closely with the supply department to ensure that they have all the ingredients they need to create their meals. The supplies are carefully stored in the ship's pantry, a small space where the food is kept at safe temperatures until it is needed. The pantry is stocked with a variety of items, including fresh fruits and vegetables, meats and grains. Once the food is prepared, it is served in the mess hall, a small space where the sailors gather to eat their meals. The mess hall is designed to maximize efficiency, with the food being served in shifts to ensure that everyone is fed in a timely manner. The sailors sit at tightly packed tables enjoying their meals and bonding with one another. In addition to the regular meals, the chefs also prepare special treats for the sailors, such as baked goods and snacks. These treats are a welcome break from the routine of the workday, providing the sailors with a moment of comfort and relaxation. Despite the cramped conditions and limited resources, the food prepared for sailors is carefully crafted and designed to provide the crew with the nutrients and energy they need to perform their duties. Each sailor is assigned to a specific department, with responsibilities ranging from engine maintenance to sonar operations. The crew must work together as a team, communicating effectively and supporting one another in their tasks. Let's go to the senior officer on the ship and see what his life is like underwater. As the highest ranking officer on the ship, the captain is responsible for overseeing every aspect of the submarine's operations and ensuring the safety of the crew. Despite the challenging and demanding nature of this role, the captain is at the forefront of their ship's mission and is integral to the success of each and every operation. 
The day begins with a morning briefing to assess the ship's current position, review any updates to the mission, and make any necessary changes to the course. Throughout the day, the captain is in constant communication with their crew, overseeing the operations of each department and ensuring that everything is running smoothly. One of the captain's primary responsibilities is to make quick and informed decisions in any emergency situation that may arise, whether it's responding to an underwater threat, dealing with a fire on board, or navigating the submarine through rough seas, the captain must remain calm and composed in the face of danger. In addition to their operational responsibilities, the captain also plays a critical role in maintaining the morale of the crew. Living in close quarters for months at a time can be challenging for the sailors, and it's up to the captain to foster a positive and supportive atmosphere on board. This means organizing social events and activities, leading discussions and debriefs, and being a role model for the crew. Another important aspect of the captain's day is overseeing the maintenance and upkeep of the sub. The captain must ensure that all systems are functioning correctly and that any necessary repairs are carried out in a timely manner. They also work closely with the supply department to ensure that the ship has enough provisions to complete the mission. Throughout the day, the captain also participates in regular briefings and meetings with the crew, as well as with higher-ups in the Navy. These meetings are crucial for keeping everyone informed about the mission and for gathering feedback and suggestions from the crew. Now I hear you thinking, but who sets the ship's course and who knows where the ship is? As the submarine's primary navigator, the navigator is responsible for ensuring the safe and efficient navigation of the ship. This requires a deep understanding of the submarine systems and a constant awareness of the vessel's surroundings. The day also begins with a morning briefing where the navigator receives updates on the submarine's current position, any changes to the mission, and any potential hazards in the area. Throughout the day, the navigator must continually monitor the ship's systems and keep track of its position and movements. This requires a close attention to detail and the ability to quickly respond to any changes in the sub's environment. One of the navigator's primary responsibilities is to ensure that the submarine stays on course and avoids any underwater obstacles. This requires a constant monitoring of the ship's instruments and the ability to make quick and accurate calculations. The navigator must also be aware of any potential dangers in the area, such as underwater mines, and take the necessary steps to avoid them. In addition to their navigational responsibilities, the navigator also plays a critical role in communicating with the rest of the crew. The navigator must be able to provide accurate updates on the ship's position and movements, as well as answer any questions the crew may have about the sub's systems. The navigator also participates in regular briefings and meetings with the crew and higher-ups in the Navy. Another important aspect of the navigator's day is the maintenance and upkeep of the submarine's navigation systems. The navigator must ensure that all systems are functioning correctly and that any necessary repairs are carried out in a timely manner. This requires a deep understanding of the submarine's technology and the ability to troubleshoot and fix any issues that may arise. Let's look at another important function on the ship, sonar operator. As the submarine's primary sensor, the sonar operator is responsible for detecting and tracking underwater targets, such as other submarines, ships, and other vessels. This requires a really deep understanding of the submarine's sonar systems and the ability to analyze and interpret the data they collect. Throughout the day, the sonar operator must continually monitor the sub's sonar systems and keep track of any potential targets. One of the sonar operator's primary responsibilities is to analyze and interpret the data collected by the submarine sonar systems. This requires a deep understanding of the technology and the ability to identify and track underwater targets accurately. The sonar operator must also be able to detect and avoid any underwater mines or other hazards that may pose a threat to the submarine. Before we look at the life of the sailors on board and what they do when they have free time, First, we go to the weapons officer. As the sub's primary weapons specialist, 
The weapons officer is responsible for the submarine's arsenal of torpedoes, missiles, and other weapon systems. Throughout the day, the weapons officer must be constantly vigilant and making sure that the sub's weapons are ready for use at all times. One of the weapons officer's primary responsibilities is to develop and implement weapon strategies and plans. The weapons officer has to ensure that all the systems are functioning properly and any necessary repairs are carried out quickly. What do sailors do when they have free time? While sailors aboard a submarine have limited free time, they do have a variety of options for entertainment and relaxation. You might not expect it, but there are facilities aboard a submarine such as a small gym. Physical activity is important for sailors to stay healthy, so many subs have a small gym or exercise equipment on board. Sailors can work out, play sports, or engage in other physical activities to stay in shape. Luxury facilities aboard a US Navy sub is limited due to the cramped and confined nature of sub life. The primary focus is on providing necessities for the crew, such as food, shelter, and basic comfort. But there is also a library and a recreation room aboard. During their free time, they can also go to their beds to relax and sleep. But where do sailors sleep? The sleeping quarters on a sub are cramped and compact, with bunk beds arranged in tight rows. Sailors are assigned a specific bunk and locker, which they can use to store their personal belongings. The bunks are stacked three high, and sailors have just enough space to sit up in bed. Despite the close quarters, sailors are provided with a certain degree of privacy. Each bunk is equipped with curtains that can be closed to block out light and noise. The sleeping quarters are designed to be as quiet as possible. The sailors need to get adequate rest to perform their duties effectively. Quiet hours are strictly enforced, and sailors are expected to be respectful of their fellow crew members who are trying to sleep. The submarine is designed to minimize noise, with sound deadening materials and insulation used to reduce the transmission of noise from one compartment to another. Despite this, the noise of the submarine's machinery and the sound of the ocean can still be heard, so sailors are provided with earplugs to help them sleep. Because sailors live and work on board, food is one of the most important things that must be on board. But how are supplies replenished when they're deep underwater on a mission? Supplies on a submarine are replenished through a process known as at-sea replenishment. This involves a supply ship rendezvousing with the submarine while both vessels are underway, allowing the submarine to take on new supplies without having to return to port. The supply ship is equipped with cranes and other equipment that are used to transfer food, water, fuel, and other supplies to the submarine. The process is coordinated between the crew of both vessels and requires precise timing and skill to ensure that the supplies are transferred safely and efficiently. The work is hard and the hours are long, but the sailors are highly trained and well equipped to handle the challenges of life on a submarine. They're constantly on the lookout for potential dangers, such as enemy ships or underwater mines. They must also be prepared for emergencies, such as fires or floods. The sailors are trained to handle these situations with calmness and efficiency, working together as a team to keep the ship and its crew safe. What happens during a fire or flooding on a submarine? In the event of a flooding, water can quickly fill the sub's compartments, causing loss of buoyancy and potentially sinking the vessel. The crew must act quickly to seal off affected areas and pump out the water to prevent further damage. Additionally, they must ensure that the submarine's nuclear reactor is protected from the flooding and that the radiation levels are safe for the crew. After a flooding on a nuclear submarine, the crew must act quickly to pump out the water and prevent the sub from sinking. They use a variety of pumps and equipment to remove the water from the flooded compartments. One common method is to use submersible pumps, which are electric pumps that can be submerged in water to remove it. These pumps can be portable, allowing them to be moved to different locations as needed, and they can also be connected to hoses to pump the water out of the submarine. Another method is to use bilge pumps, which are pumps that are specifically designed to remove water from the bottom of the submarine. These pumps are typically located in the lowest parts of the submarine, where water is most likely to collect. They can be powered by electricity or by manual operation 
depending on the design of the submarine. In addition, the crew can use emergency pumps, which are pumps that are specifically designed to be used in emergency situations like flooding. These pumps are located in strategic places in the sub and can be activated quickly to pump out water. Overall, the crew will use a combination of these methods, depending on the specific situation and the location of the flooding. It's important to note that the crew will have to act quickly to pump the water out before it causes significant damage to the subsystems and integrity. The nuclear reactor on a submarine must be protected from flooding for several reasons. The first being safety. A flooded nuclear reactor can cause damage to the fuel rods and the cooling systems, which can lead to a loss of coolant accident and potentially a nuclear meltdown. This can release radioactive materials and cause harm to the crew and the environment. The second reason being power. The reactor is the source of power for the submarine. If the reactor becomes flooded and loses coolant, the sub will lose propulsion and electrical power, making it difficult to control and surface. The third being containment. The reactor on a submarine is designed to be contained in a sealed compartment called the reactor compartment, which is designed to prevent radioactive materials from escaping in the event of an accident. Flooding can compromise the integrity of this compartment and allow radioactive materials to escape. Fourth is an emergency plan. Nuclear subs have emergency plans in place in case of a flooding event that specifically addresses the protection of the reactor. This includes emergency procedures, such as shutting down the reactor and isolating the flooded compartments to prevent the flooding from reaching the reactor compartment. And the fifth being radiation. Flooding can lead to increased levels of radiation in the affected compartments which can be dangerous for the crew. It's important to keep the flooding from reaching the reactor to avoid exposing the crew to harmful levels of radiation. In summary, protecting the nuclear reactor from flooding is crucial to prevent a nuclear accident, maintain power and propulsion, contain radioactive materials, and protect the crew's safety. Similarly, a fire on a nuclear submarine can be a serious and potentially catastrophic event. Fires can be caused by a variety of factors, such as electrical malfunctions or human error. The crew must act quickly to extinguish the flames and ventilate the affected areas to clear out smoke and toxic gases. They must also ensure that the sub's nuclear reactor is protected from the fire and that the radiation levels are safe for the crew. Both situations can pose significant hazards to the crew and the sub's nuclear reactor and require immediate and coordinated action to minimize the damage and protect the safety of the crew. After a fire, the air can become contaminated with a variety of harmful substances, such as smoke, toxic gases, and particulate matter. The concentration and composition of these contaminants can vary depending on the materials that were burning and the conditions of the fire, but in general, the air after a fire can be extremely hazardous and should be avoided if possible. The crew of the submarine should use protective equipment, such as self-contained breathing apparatus, to avoid inhaling the harmful air, like an EAB system. An emergency air breathing, or EAB system, is a life-saving piece of equipment found on subs, which provide compressed air to the crew in an emergency situation where the sub's air supply can become contaminated or depleted. Proper ventilation is crucial to clear the air of these harmful substances, so the submarine's crew must take measures to ventilate the affected areas, such as by opening hatches and using fans to push the contaminated air out of the submarine and bring in fresh air. Ventilation on a submerged nuclear submarine can be a challenging task, as the submarine is sealed off from the outside environment and is not able to open hatches or windows to let fresh air in. One way a submarine can ventilate is by using mechanical ventilation systems, which uses fans and ducts to circulate the air within the submarine. These systems can also be used to push contaminated air out of the submarine and bring in fresh air from outside. However, this will only be possible if the submarine is near the surface or has a snorkel system installed. 
The sub can be submerged for weeks or even months at a time with no contact from the outside world. The crew must rely on each other for companionship and support, and the pressure of being in close quarters for such a long time can be intense. The isolation can also make it difficult to keep up with family and friends, and the constant confinement can lead to feelings of claustrophobia. The sub can also be a noisy environment, with the constant hum of the engines and the sound of rushing water past the hull. The noise can be overwhelming and make it difficult to sleep, which can lead to fatigue and irritability. The crew must also deal with the constant vibration of the vessel, which can make it difficult to keep things organized and tidy. The U.S. Navy sub is a unique and challenging environment, but the sailors who serve on these vessels are some of the most dedicated and skilled in the Navy. They're willing to sacrifice their comfort and privacy for the sake of their country, and they do so with courage and dedication. The challenges of living in a confined space underwater are many, but the sense of camaraderie and the pride of serving one's country make it all worth it. Finally, after months at sea, the sub surfaces and the crew is able to see the sun and breathe fresh air once again. They receive a hero's welcome as they return to their home port proud of their accomplishments and the sacrifices they've made to serve their country. Life on a sub can be challenging, but for the crew of the U.S. Navy, it's all worth it. Show your respect for these men and women by liking this video and thanking them for their service. Could you live underwater for months to defend the country? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.